Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be doing another realistic roleplay mission. Now, the idea here is that we have just woken up. It's about 6.30 in the morning. This is our current, uh, current house, or at least we're renting a, renting a room upstairs at the moment. We came out here on a off-road vacation. Our truck is down there, and we need to put some, uh, we need to put some vehicles together and bring them out of the garage, load them up on the trailer, and as you can see, we actually already have a point marked a little bit farther away on the map, and that is going to be the trail we are going to. Now, this trail on the map doesn't look too bad, but once you get there, it's a lot more intense than you might think. So, let's not, uh, let's not let this morning go to waste. We'll get into the garage, we'll get some vehicles built, and we'll load them up on the Square Bodies trailer, and we will see what we can do. Now, let's go ahead and head into the garage. So, real quick, one of the ones we are going to build, one of the ones we are going to build, is a second gen. Now, the reason why I'm building a second gen is because I do really like the idea of taking a huge truck like this and turning it into a, like, turning it into a trail rig. You know what I mean? The idea of a full-size trail rig has always been cool to me. And I've never really, like, some people love full-size trail rigs, and some people are, like, totally not about it. So, I can understand, like, you know, if you're on either side of that coin, but, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. So, let's go and throw a set of, like, side steps that I'm going to use for sliders on there, because we may need them. And, real quick, we're going to do a single hood stack. And, we are also, where's my bumpers? There we go. We're going to do a pre-runner bumper. And we're going to probably end up painting this thing probably orange, actually. I really dig the orange on this truck. It's going to be a quick, simple, easy build. We'll go ahead and load it up on the trailer. And then this guy will be good to go. We've got the crawler suspension on there. Got 40-inch pit bulls on it. And even though it's the quad cab with the long bed, you guys know if you've seen this thing before, it's properly good out on the trails. So let's go ahead and... There we go. Actually, not bad. Now, the only thing is, this thing is, like, this thing is freaking huge. I need to creep forward just a little bit. All right, we got a little bit further forward now. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put it back into automatic mode, stop the engine, and get back in the garage and get one more rig. Now, it's going to have to fit behind the second gen, which is a little bit of a tall order, I think, because the second gen is huge. It's a very, very very large vehicle. You know what? Hmm. I'm going back and forth here. I think, ooh, it'd be awesome to bring the Ram Charger, but you know what? I've never brought the little, uh, the little IX-5 out to that trail, so you know what? Yeah, it's actually, it, it's actually a really cool combination to see. So let's do the heavily upgraded 350, and we'll do the IX crawler box. We'll do the crawler suspension. And we're going to throw a set of, let's see, oh, what do I want to throw on there? Probably, uh, well, those are going to be a little bit, like, a little bit iffy, though, in terms of width. I like, yeah, I like these. I like these a lot. They're wide. They got a thick footprint. They look like they would properly work. All right, so we're going to go with y'all. And long offline winch. And we'll throw, let's see, eh, tall front facing snorkel on it. That'll be all good. We definitely want the roll cage. I, I definitely think that if we have the roll cage, we will be much better off. You know, just a bit of a hunch there. Just a bit of a hunch. We're going to go with the classic roll bar lights, and we will go with the heavy-duty winch bumper. And let's see, we're going to go with the, hmm, we'll go with the red bead-locked wheels. And, well, the other truck's orange, so let's paint the Jeep red. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Now, this little CJ should be short enough to get up onto that trailer. So, I'm, I'm really hoping it is. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. You know, honestly, we really, we probably could have fit um, the Bronco or the Ram Charger up there. But, this will be, okay, yeah. This will be comfortable for the, like, for the trailer itself. We won't really have to worry about the trucks constantly, like, you know, bashing into each other or anything like that. Stop engine. And we should have the weight distributed kind of okay. I am going to back up the 3500 just a little bit. You know, the trail rig that's like too big to be a trail rig. Yeah, that guy. All right. That's that's all I wanted to back it up. That's it. That That's completely it. Now we're going to get back into the Delta pickup. Fire it up. And let's see. 
Race trail. Oh, trail legs came back up. Okay, never mind. All right, pack those trucks in and let's get out of here. Pulls it like a champ, that's for sure. Got quite the um, quite the combination of rigs on the back there. It's like all in on the full size front and all in on the Jeep size front. I'm digging it. I really am. We got beans on the dash and the tow rig. We are good to go. Just checking for traffic. Not really, but it's a role play, so we got to do it. Now, this uh, entry road is a little bumpy, but shouldn't be too bad. As long as I feather the throttle and high, we'll be fine. I've got this thing equipped with like the simple five speed, not the off-road four speed, because I really felt like we didn't need the off-road four speed for this. I felt like the off-road four speed was honestly a little over the top for what we're doing here. But I really wanted to do a nice, you know, role play mission with trucks that I haven't really used all that much, especially the Delta, considering the fact that the Delta is on console now and a lot of people have been really, really enjoying it. And I think it's, I think it's a wonderful truck. And I think if you haven't tried it yet, especially if you're on console, you absolutely need to give it a shot. All right, there's the trailhead. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and get our rigs unloaded. We'll pull up just a little bit in front of it. God, what a gorgeous trail. It goes right down there through the river and then actually winds along the edge of the river itself. All right, ramps down. Unpack trucks and shut that thing down. All right, get the CJ fired up and rolled off the trailer. Nice and easy. Good, good. And we'll park you right here. Not bad. Stop engine. Now, R&R 3500. God, that sound as it eases back off the trailer. <laughs> All right, we should be ready to wheel now. Should be ready to wheel. It's like, yeah, like almost 11 o'clock in the morning. Perfect time to head out down some trails. Now, we're going to go a, we're going to go the riverside direction in the 3500 and then after we go the riverside direction for a little ways in it then we're going to go a slightly different direction in the cj and kind of get a little bit of two-way exploring going on right off the bat we get through this beautiful river crossing absolutely beautiful river crossing beautiful location beautiful trail design the only other time i've been to this trail was actually on a live stream and it was a really cool trail, absolutely incredible trail, but I didn't really get as much of a chance to kind of like go back a couple different times and take it in because I was trying to explore a bunch of different trails that day. So kind of going through it now in like a little bit of a slower, more realistic way really gives me the time to take in the beauty that this trail has to offer. I can definitely tell you that with these 40s, this thing absolutely puts in work. And just following the edge of the river like this, what a beautiful way to create a trail. Absolutely beautiful way to create a trail. It's probably not the best line, but yeah, I wanted to go up to the left a little bit. I turned into kind of the driver's side of that rock because I didn't want my passenger side tires to kind of slip and then the whole truck to flop. So easily, easily achieved goal, but you just got to have it in your head. Really hovering a wheel there. Not worrying too much about that, though. Trying to be careful. Nice and easy does it. Not bad. And like I said before, there are very few areas where on the map you would anticipate this trail being challenging. But, like, once you get down here, you realize it's actually a pretty intense trail. I mean, any section that doesn't have rocks has mud and vice versa. So you really have to be on your toes all the time. Fortunately, if you're if you're a fan of driving long wheelbase rigs, these trails actually lend themselves much better than you might think to the advantages of a long wheelbase truck. Unfortunately, there are some disadvantages of a long wheelbase truck as well that will sometimes come into play, especially when you need to make uh, tight maneuvers. But so far, we haven't really run into any of those situations. Now, we could go up that way, but I really would like to see where the actual trail keeps going. Oh, no! The only way we were saving that would be by doing something, at least in the game, the only way we were going to save that would have been by doing something very unrealistic. And I know that some of, you, some of you guys might be like, no, you broke the immersion! Well, you know what? Sometimes 
In SnowRunner, sometimes weird glitches happen where your wheel literally phases through a log, and I don't really consider that realistic, so if you ask me, that's what broke the immersion first. <laughs> Give it just a little bit of a winch tug. Okay, all right. Back to immersion. <laughs> Nice and easy, making our way down. This is probably one of the prettiest trails in this entire environment. I really recommend coming out here if you're a fan of trails with views because actually you get this panoramic shot right here looking down over the river, the bridge, the rock arch. Everything there is absolutely gorgeous. But we've done a little bit of wheeling now in the second gen. And the second gen, obviously, you guys know this thing has incredible capabilities. We now have to switch into the good old CJ. So let's fire it up and get it down the trail. Now, this little guy, I haven't actually driven it in a long time. And it's gone through a couple of updates since the last time I've driven it. So I'm really excited to see how it feels out on the trail this time, especially with these tires. I haven't really uh, done much trail riding with these tires in particular. So they seem like they would do really well, but you gotta, you gotta wait and see for that. Easy, because I can't really comment on them just yet. They seem to have handled what we went through just fine, though. All right, first rock descent. Right down off the edge. Okay, easy. Little slippy, little slick, but not terrible. Got a little lean going there that I wasn't too big of a fan of, but I'm gonna let that be. I mean, it's fine, it's chill, but just don't, you know, don't get a whole lot closer to that. Nice little flex coming down off that rock section. I'm gonna not go up there on the left like I did with the 3500 because that probably was not the best move now that I think about it, sort of in hindsight. So we're actually gonna take this little left hand turn. Well, no, we're gonna take the rock slide. We are gonna see actually what this thing is properly made of when you put it into a situation like that because a situation like that is when a vehicle's true character really does rise to the surface. Now. Seems to be trying to sink a little bit through here. And you could definitely tell where the advantages of that long wheelbase of the 3500 are really starting to come into play. There you go. Not bad. Not bad. I gotta say, not bad. You definitely have to adjust your driving characteristics. Giving myself one winch mulligan there. But you definitely have to adjust your driving characteristics because it does have, obviously, less flex than the, uh, the 3500 does. The 3500 is running like a very heavily advanced uh, coilover setup. Whereas, I mean, this is running a coilover setup, but it's still like, it's not quite as flexible. And so you definitely have to approach it with a little bit more of a old school wheeling um, approach and feel where you don't quite have as much flex and you have a little bit more bounce and you also have a very short wheelbase, which again, can both help and hurt depending on how you know to apply those driving dynamics. Let's make our way around the rocks. Try not to get caught up in a sketchy scenario with the rocks there. That would absolutely not be a good idea. There you go. Low. Easy. Flexing right over the rocks. Good, good, good. Positioning myself on the inside of this rock obstacle. Not bad at all. There you go. Letting off, letting off, back into low. These tires are impressive. I'm actually very, very happy with how they've done, especially on these rocks. There you go. So my question is, can this little guy take on the slide? Let's find out. It's gonna be quite a hill climb if he can. Kind of in a hole right now, which I'd rather not be in. Oh, we're caught on that rock. Well, they have winches in real life, so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that fact for just a second. Oh my god, that is not the direction I wanted to go. Not in the least bit. Made my way just a little bit further up. In hindsight, I probably should have climbed up here first, like gone across the bridge, climbed up here and then tried to climb up the washout, but 
I gotta tell you, that washout ain't looking good. It is really not looking too good. That's okay, though. That's okay, though. Little bit of a pull of the winch. All right. Got rotated around. That's fine. No rollover, please, and thank you. Wow, it wants to fall backwards. I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy about that. It really does not want to go up this washout. I feel like this is definitely more of a like if you were going to approach this realistically, you would definitely be approaching it in more of a rock bouncer way than you would in a lifted CJ kind of way. Only reason I say that is because I think it's a little bit out of this uh out of this little CJ's ballpark. Although once we winched our way into the actual groove itself, it started to grab traction, but the problem is the way these rocks are spaced, it's it's still just a little sketch for the little CJ. Now, that's no sort of bad mark on this thing at all. That's like, this is an obstacle that I would not even recommend taking the dodge down, so this is full-on rock bouncer stuff, but I just wanted to see how far the little CJ could make it. Now, if you have been looking for new trails to do and new realistic trails to test out your vehicles in realistic uh, trail riding and rock crawling environments, this trail on TNB Trails is definitely the way to go. All you got to do, like I said before, is make your way down to this trailhead right here and then turn off to the right and wind down the river. And this actually goes into a very gnarly rock section a little bit later on. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.